Hey Samoanix, what's up? Welcome to a new quick win and today we're talking about the camera preview overlay custom stuff because when you use the regular camera with Cordova or Capacitor you usually get this standard dialogue you know from your iOS or Android phone but if you want to add elements like perhaps a little box, a little icon of your company, anything like this, you need a custom plugin and that's exactly what we're going to do today. So we will use from the Capacitor community the Camera Preview plugin. Actually, this plugin has a few problems. Um, so for iOS, there was something that still needs to be merged when I was using this for Android. There were also little problems. So I hope when the video comes out, these problems will be resolved. But anyway, let's get started. Um, first of all, you can start a blank new Ionic application with Capacitor enabled and then install the at capacitor community slash camera preview package. Also, just go ahead, run the first Ionic build and add the platforms because then you're good to go. And uh, we can also tweak the main activity quickly. That's also, um, I might have said this in the past, the standard for capacitor plugins. So you copy this little block, uh, the author of the plugin usually puts in there. In this case, I had to figure out the actual uh, package of the um, camera preview. But if you want to just check out the Android folder and dive into this and then you will in the end see the actual ID. So that's what you need to import in the main activity which you can find in Android app source main uh, your bundle ID main activity. Great. Once this is done we can dive into the actual usage of this plugin. So first of all we're gonna import a few things. Let's quickly go through it. Uh, as usual, we're gonna import the plugins from Capacitor Core and destructure it uh, so we can access the camera preview object. Now, these are just a few options that we can get from the camera preview and this block is really important. If you wanna try this functionality on the web, you need to import plugins like this because only then they will be registered internally um, and that's just what you need. Um, let's get started. Um, I added a few things like an image where we'll store our captured image and a little check if the camera is currently active and actually torch active is not used anymore. I wanted to use the torch but there were a few problems as well so I just skipped that part. <laughs> so let's start with opening the camera. To open the camera uh, we can create a few options um, if you want to check out the typing but there's actually not too much. We don't really need the width or height, um, we need the position, the class name and the parent. And that's what we use uh, for the position, so rear or front camera. Um, the parent and the class name are objects from our HTML page. So we will dive into this in a second as well. And then just call camera preview start. And if you want to keep like track of uh, the active state of the camera, then we can set this to true. Now, the interesting part in our HTML is, well, not this. This is just an image that we will display once we got an image captured and also a button to open the camera. So we can actually test all of this in our browser, which is pretty nice. I'm going to show you the preview on the device later as well. So for now we can open the camera and we cannot read property a pen child of null. This is actually correct because the camera plugin um, looks in your page for a parent object with the ID camera preview. So you should create a div somewhere in your page like this and give it the ID camera preview and uh, I will also just use the class camera preview. With that in place, um, the result is this. And I hope I didn't mess up my sound or anything now with this camera. Okay, I, I think we're good. So you can see uh, there's a nice little uh, camera preview of myself on the screen. Um, it looks kind of okay, but on a phone, this will actually not work like this. Uh, we will need a lot of CSS to achieve this because um, as far as I know, the camera is hidden and where are my buttons? Um, didn't I remove the styling? That's really 
crazy there I can see something but anyway we need a few more buttons here of course on the overlay uh, you could also display an image so let's go ahead and do this in terms of the buttons I came up with a little check if the camera is active and then I display a little uh, image which I've stored in my asset folder and then I've added three buttons to stop the camera to click capture image and to flip the camera between rear and front. All of them have an ID uh, so we can just target them with the CSS a bit easier. And let's see how this will look now within our application. Um, so they are hidden now. <laughs> no, they look like this. And why is my camera up here? Um, anyway, <laughs> interesting. Now, I wanted to have them above the image, which means I need an absolute position for all of these three things. And my image, I guess it's here. The Ionic logo is white. So if I would use something like background red, we would see it. So there's the logo. Doesn't really look like a camera preview with icons above it, but a bit more CSS and we can do it. So um, first of all, for our image, as I said, this line is actually important for devices, I, uh, I, I think so, because in my tests, um, a lot of examples didn't work, a lot of things I tried didn't work. In the end, this is what's left, um, because I think we need to make the background um, transparent of the ion content as the camera is basically displayed behind the content. Um, but actually it's displayed in the camera preview, so I'm not 100% sure. Maybe if we would give this an index as well, it could even work without this, but I currently fear to break my code. So the overlay has an absolute position, uh, the camera preview as well might not even be needed perhaps, and the image overlay is our ionic image. For the rest of the buttons, so the capture, the flip and the close, I also came up with an absolute position, uh, which looks like this. So for capture, uh, it's right in the middle, basically. <laughs> uh, the close button is more to the left and the flip button is more to the right. And as a result of this, we should now see a little bit different picture. So, Perhaps if I make this uh, device, no, doesn't really get better. Um, so the camera preview here is still really a bit limited, but we can see that we got a preview, camera preview at least. Um, uh, I, that's still running. I really fear that it switches to a different camera and all my recording is gone. Uh, we got the buttons, which should be above the recording. Once we check this out, we got the image overlay. Um, there's just one more thing I wanted to show you since uh, in the recent article I saw the CSS parts and they now arrived within Ionic uh, elements. So a quick learning in here as well. If you check out the buttons, can I check out my button? Uh, you should see that some elements within the uh, shadow uh, component uh, have a part. I uh, actually can't find it. Okay, it's in here, of course. Um, so, mm, yeah, that's really when, when I want to show you something cool. It's not going to happen. Okay, here. Here's the part native. And we can target this part and inject our CSS rules, although this is a web component and usually the style is encapsulated. And the way to do this is by using and the name of the component or ion item, ion button, whatever, but we got the idea anyway. And then part and the name of the part. And then you can write standard CSS rules and they will be injected into this. So I wanted to make these buttons round and let's check it out. Open the camera again and now the buttons are round. I'm actually not sure if there was maybe a CSS property for this, but I think this wasn't possible in the past. So. We got a kind of nice example here. Let's try to capture an image. Ah, okay, we haven't implemented the function. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, okay, uh, maybe we go back to our uh, implementation and add the stop camera. Uh, it's too late today. And we add the capture image and we add flip camera. In fact, flip camera didn't really work for me as I expected because usually you should be able to use camera preview dot 
flip uh, just like this. But if we check out camera preview, um, the definition file, we see there's only start, stop, capture, uh, flash modes and the flash mode stuff. So right now, um, Flip is not in the interface implementation. It is actually in the native implementation. So on a native iOS Android device, this will work nicely, um, but you might get an error on the web, but perhaps this is also already merged uh, once, we, uh, once this video goes live. So to stop the camera, um, nothing uh, really to do just call camera preview stop and if you want to keep track of your uh, state and then also to capture an image basically the current image you see in the frame you can use uh, again some options uh, which are pretty limited <laughs> only quality uh, and then you can get the result by calling capture on the camera preview with your options Result needs this little addition if you directly want to display it in your view. Otherwise, it's just uh, the base 64 string without this information. So let's one more time try to open the camera, uh, capture an image, capture an image. Uh, okay, capture. Okay, looks like the buttons on the web aren't really accessible because the video is actually above them. So that's kind of interesting. Let me quickly figure this out. Well, let's just add a little index to our three buttons uh, to fix this quickly. So flip, close and capture. Let's just give it 11 because I think the rest has 10. So then we should be finally able... Okay, now it finally works. I'm glad that I could capture that image. It works on the web. Let's also quickly check it out on a device now. Okay, here's the Epic application on my phone. And there we go. Inception, I love videos like this. Oh, the Inception is real in here. That's the best application tutorial I've ever made. So I can capture an image. There we go, captured image. I can open the camera again. I can actually flip it as well uh, without breaking my camera. So I notice I just uh, messed up the camera settings again. Sorry for the bad image. And we see that we got all the overlays. We got the um, image, <clears throat> the Ionic image we added. Uh, we got the capture button. So we got a fully customized overlay view and we can still snap images. So that's really awesome. It works great with capacitor and I really love this functionality. Okay, let's quickly snap the final image and of course we don't have an image. So I hope you enjoyed this quick win on creating a custom overlay for the camera preview. If you need anything like perhaps a little box around this or anything fancy, just go ahead with this plugin. It won't work with a standard camera plugin. So you're really a lot better off with a plugin like this. If you got any questions, as always, leave a comment, please like the video, um, and then I hope to catch you very soon for the next tutorial or another vlog episode. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and stay subscribed so you get notified about all the new tutorials, quick wins, and other app development and web development videos on this channel. If you want to learn more about Ionic with in-depth courses, a community of like-minded developers so you can learn and build your apps faster, you should definitely check out the Ionic Academy, which is my code school to help you with everything Ionic with a huge library of courses, material, and a supportive Slack channel so we can get your app out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you inside the next video. Have a great day and happy coding. Simon. <laughs>